And welcome. Thank you for joining us. Today we will be discussing a very exciting topic regarding internet security called the firewall. Our presenters today include Christine Raphael, Courtney Fedorcha, Daniel Song, Nick Maurer, and Michelle Moore. Courtney will kick us off with our firewall induction, so go ahead and take it away, Courtney. Your computer has thousands of ports that can be accessed for various purposes, such as a hacker trying to see your confidential information, like a credit card for example. The firewall will act as a first line of defense in preventing the hacker from entering your network. The hacker will look for any opening ports in a computer's network that can be accessible, so you need a firewall. They can keep confidential and valuable information from being accessible, as well as prevent specific traffic, like music sharing. It can also modify the data packets that come across the security system, called a network address translation. Firewalls can prevent unauthorized modification of data on a website and ensure system availability as well as other features. A firewall's job resembles a physical firewall that keeps a fire from spreading from one area to the next. A firewall is a program or hardware device that filters the information coming through the internet connection to your computer. So, if an incoming packet of information were to come with flags by the filters, the firewall will not allow the packet through. A company, for example, will place a firewall at every connection to the internet and give the firewall security rules to implement for their system. One rule could be that one computer out of every 300 computers inside the company can receive FTP traffic. Firewalls use one or more of three methods to control traffic flowing in and out of the network packet filtering, proxy service, and stateful inspection. Before exploring the individual firewall functions, it is important to understand and comprehend the nature of a packet. When data needs to be sent from one place to another, that information must be converted to a packet. A packet is a small piece of information written in binary form that when translated at the receiving computer will be converted back to the original file. If the information is too large for one packet, several packets are made to equally split up the information into smaller pieces. These packets would then be combined and converted to its original form at the receiving computer. For example, you want to send a message to your friend on their computer. Let's say their IP address is 5.6.7.8 while your address is 1.2.3.4 and you decide to type in let's study for a data communications class then you click send as you can see in the diagram that message after being converted into a packet moves through the transmission control protocol layer and the internet protocol layer to determine who the message is being sent to then the packet moves to the hardware to reach the internet from here, the packet will reach the destination computer, be converted back into the original message, and displayed on your friend's computer, all usually in less now than Now that seconds. we understand the nature of packets, let's talk about firewall. How are these two related? Well, data that is harmful to your computer or personal and financial information can be sent from hackers using the same method as explained earlier. To prevent this from happening, firewalls monitor and inspect these packets, also known as traffic. They also reject any suspicious or unauthorized content from accessing the computer. This firewall technique is known as packet filtering. In addition to packet filtering, there are a few more ways in which a firewall can help protect your computer. These include stateful inspection firewall and proxy server firewall. Each of these mechanisms has its drawbacks as well as its advantages. Packet filtering is generally faster and easier to implement, but is susceptible to attack from users faking their source IP addresses or source port to trick your firewall into thinking that your traffic should be allowed through. To beef up packet filtering security, stateful packet filtering was introduced. Essentially, a stateful packet filter performs the same as a packet filter, but with a couple of added measures. First, it looks at more details from each packet to determine what is contained within the packet rather than simply who and where it is from, or in our case, allegedly from. Second, 
It monitors communications between the two devices and compares the traffic not only to the rules that has been given, but also to the previous communications. If any communication seems out of context or out of the ordinary based on previous traffic, that packet is ultimately rejected. Last but not least is the proxy server. A firewall proxy server is an application that acts as an intermediary between two end systems. Firewall proxy servers operate at the application layer of the firewall, where both ends of a connection are forced to conduct the session through the proxy. They do this by creating and running a process on the firewall that mirrors a service as if it were running on the end host. Information from the internet is retrieved by the firewall and then sent to the requesting system and vice versa. These functions are generally recognized by the National Institute of Standards and Technology. It is important to remember that while firewalls are useful for the protection of your business or personal information, they are not the only level of security needed. It is equivalent to having your front door locked but your windows wide open. Firewall security should be a layer of protection and not the solitary guard against malicious invasions. Virus protection and spiral protection and other levels of support that when used in conjunction with firewalls provide the best barrier for your network. There are three types of firewalls, packet level firewall, application level firewall, and the network address translation firewall. We need a brief description of network address translation in order to understand what the network address translation firewall does. The network address translation is used to map the private IP addresses of individual computers, computers on a local network to a single IP address, and this would be the network address translation address on the internet. Most providers use this to remap their end consumer IP addresses to the internet. A network address translation firewall is a piece of equipment or software that makes the bridge between the local network and the internet and it makes all the connections appear to be from the network address translation address. The network address translation firewall translates the private IP addresses by using an address table. IP addresses inside the organization are translated into proxy IP addresses that are used on the internet. Packet level firewalls examine the source and destination addresses that are in each network packet as it passes through the firewall. They are also used as an initial screen for the network that is devoted solely to providing public internet access. A packet level firewall protects an internet network against unauthorized access and attack from public or external network by blocking some packets. Packets may be blocked based on source IP address, destination IP address, source or destination, TCP, port number, or other packet header fields, time of day, or user authentication. Filtering is carried out on a packet by packet basis, and the entire packet level firewall may be implemented on a router. Normally, all filtering happens inside the operating system, which makes this type of firewall very fast. The application level firewall searches for known attacks by searching through the application layer's contents. The application level firewall limits access by applications to the operating system of a computer. An application firewall offers additional protection by controlling the execution of files or the handling of data by specific applications. Application layer firewall Firewalls improve the overall security of the application infrastructure by preventing attacks that are likely to cause a service outage or cause structural damage to data sources. Application layer firewalls are generally remotely updatable, which allows them to prevent newly discovered vulnerabilities. These firewalls are often more up-to-date than specific security-focused code included in applications due to the longer development and testing cycles required to include such code within applications. Application layer firewalls functions in one or two modes, passive or active. Active application firewalls actively inspect all incoming requests, including the actual message being exchanged against known vulnerabilities such as SQL injection, parameter and cookie tampering, and cross-site scripting. Only requests that are deemed clean are passed to the application. 
Passive application layer firewalls act in a manner similar to an intrusion detection system and that they also inspect all incoming requests against known vulnerabilities, but they do not actively reject or deny those requests if a potential attack is discovered. The next thing we're going to talk about is firewall applications in business. First thing you think about is where do you need security? It's important to quickly identify where the risks and security gaps exist at your business. You can answer these five questions to help determine if you need business class security. The first question, does your business have enough protection against internet threats? Threats like botnets, spyware, viruses, Trojan horses. Blocking them involves more than running antivirus software on individual computers. Second, do you safeguard your business critical data? All data stored in laptops, PCs, servers, smartphones, and even USB sticks should be securely stored and backed up at all times. Next question, is the internal business information that your employees need to do their jobs readily available to them wherever they're working, whenever they need it? And do you control who can access specific types of information? This is important because you don't want employees that don't need to see certain information to be able to see it. Next, is your property and your employees protected by video surveillance? If not, this is important for the safety of everyone and to help understand what happens if something goes wrong. Next thing, if and when you give visitors Wi-Fi service or when you share your applications on your network with your business partners, do you control their access? Are you sure that passers-by and neighbors cannot use your wireless network? This is important because if someone has easy access to your network, it would be much easier for them to steal business critical data. If you answered no to any of these questions, you do need business class security. This is when it's very important to have an adequate company firewall. As we've learned, firewall solutions available for companies are either software or hardware with software components. Software firewalls protect each individual computer that they're installed on, but to protect all of the company's computers, each must have the software installed. That can get expensive and difficult to maintain. On the other hand, hardware-based firewall solutions for business protect all computers on your network. They are also far easier to administer as well. The ideal firewall solutions for business integrate a hardware firewall with software controls into a comprehensive security solution that includes virtual private network support, antivirus, anti-spyware, and content filtering capabilities. Firewall solutions for companies offer comprehensive security and many other benefits. Among these are support for changing business needs. The best firewall solutions for business let you safely deploy new applications. They provide advanced application layer security for a wide range of applications, including email, voice over IP, video, and multimedia programs. Also, it allows for controlled access to your company's resources. The most effective firewall solutions for business block unauthorized access to applications or information assets. Companies also get increased employee productivity. By blocking unauthorized access from hackers, your firewall helps prevent the loss of employee productivity and valuable company data. Lastly, it allows for improved business resiliency. The best firewalls prevent disruption of business critical applications and services due to security breaches. It is very important that companies set up security policies. Security policies are rules that are electronically programmed and stored within security equipment to control areas like access privileges. Of course, security policies are also written or verbal regulations by which an organization operates. And it doesn't matter whether you're setting up a local area network, a virtual LAN, or a wide area network. It's always important to initially set the fundamental security policies. Companies must also decide who is responsible for managing and enforcing these policies and to determine how employees are informed of these rules and watchguards. And finally, company security rules are essentially useless if all the involved parties do not know and understand them. It is very important to have effective mechanisms in place for communicating the existing policies, policy changes, new policies, and security alerts regarding impending viruses or attacks. I'm going to end my part with a real-world example. This example is a services startup, uh, Ramco Incorporated, and they invested in integrated security to entice mobile business customers. They used a Cisco smart business communication system 
had built-in secured internet access, firewall, intrusion prevention, and even provides voice, video, and data services. The system provided benefits for the company, such as a competitive advantage due to reliable, fast, and secure connections, revenues from secure Wi-Fi access, document management, and conferencing services. Also, high customer loyalty and trust from protecting the privacy of their data sent over the internet. All right, this is Michelle, and I'm going to wrap up our firewall discussion. So what do we know? Firewall serves two primary purposes. First, it protects your computer systems and networks from malicious activities coming across the internet connections. Second, it also provides a computer network administrator control over those type of communications that should be conducted over those internet connections. Courtney told us that a firewall is a software program or piece of hardware to help screen out hackers, viruses, and worms that try to reach your computer. We need firewalls to protect our confidential data. Christine shared the three different types of firewalls, which are packet level, application level, and network address translation. The packet level examines the source and destination address that are in each network packet as it passes through the firewall. The application level searches for known attacks by searching through the contents application layer. The NAT firewall translates the private IP address by using an address table. Daniel discussed the functions used to control traffic flowing through the network via proxy service, packet filtering, and stateful inspection. The proxy server hides a true network address, and the firewall is the first line of defense in protecting private information. Nick talked about how companies use firewalls and their security rules. In these situations, a firewall can be programmed with specific, customized rules that restrict employees from visiting websites that are unrelated to business goals or pose security risk. In companies that deal in highly sensitive or confidential information, a firewall may have very rigid rules programmed to help protect that information. So now you know what a firewall is and, why you, and how you should use it, be sure to protect your data by implementing a firewall. There are available products like AVG, AVG Norton, and McAfee that offers firewall security.